Okay, we're back. Let's start by talking about Newman projections. So, the projections known as Newman, pretty much what they are is a look at a molecule from a very specific point of view. Uh, in particular, you look at a molecule like ethane in this case, notice how the hydrogens are positioned, you look at it from the point of view of a carbon carbon bond. And specifically you just look at it straight in that direction so that if you were you know the size of a molecule, you would only see the carbon in front. So if my point of view is from the left side of the molecule, then technically speaking what I would see is the segments in red appearing at the front of the molecule and the segments at the back which are the blue ones uh, you know appearing on the back of this molecule and the way we represent that is by drawing a circle which represents the carbon carbon bond in this case carbon one to carbon two notice that from the point of view of that bond right above it there is two hydrogens or two groups and right below it there's only one hydrogen and this is what we would call a Y up. And when you draw the Newman projection, you basically draw that um, in that specific um, setup. Two things on top, one thing on the bottom. Now, you continue looking at the molecule with that point of view and the back portion, which is the blue portion right here, notice that on top, there's only one thing above, one hydrogen, and there is two things below. So on the back, you want to draw two things below and one thing above. And notice that the lines um, only go up until the surface of that circle, the circumference of that circle, right? So the front part, you know, can actually go all the way to the middle. The back part only up until the circumference. And this kind of gives you the perspective that, yes, the red part is the front part of the molecule. The blue part is the back part of the molecule. This specific setup, this configuration, is what we call the stagger configuration, sometimes known as the anti-configuration, but we'll get to that a little bit later. For now, stagger. The point of view uh, could also be um, exchanged from the opposite direction, but you have to specify what kind of bonds you're looking through. So in this case, if we look from the point of view in which the blue segment is the front part of the molecule, well, then we will be looking at this thing from potentially C2 to C1, but in ethane, there is a plane of symmetry, so technically these two carbons are equivalent. Uh, but regardless, if we look at it from this point of view, we have one thing above, two things below, and this is the first thing we encounter, so this is the front part of the molecule. So notice here that now I'm drawing the blue portions, on the front and that's being emphasized by the fact that the bonds are being drawn all the way to the middle of the circle. The back portion now is the red uh, segment and for the red segment we have two things above, one thing below. So when we draw the back portion we'll have the two things above, one thing below with the bonds only reaching up until the circumference of the circle. Now this is still the stagger conformation because the hydrogens are uh, next to each other. Okay, so you can have this 60 degree separation between the groups themselves. Now the thing about ethane, as I was mentioning earlier, is that you actually have a plane of symmetry, right? Specifically right through the middle of the bond. You have a CH3 on this left portion of the molecule. You have a CH3 on the right portion of the molecule. So the plane of symmetry makes the hydrogens and the carbons equivalent to one another, right? So hydrogens on the left are equivalent to hydrogens on the right, carbons on the left are equivalent to carbons on the right. So these two Newman projections are equivalent. They're in essence the same thing. In more complex molecules, this will probably will not be the case. And if you go through carbons one to two, versus carbon two to one, yeah, the picture is probably gonna change a little bit. All right, so um, this brings us to the topic of torsional strain. And the idea is that anytime that you have single bonds, 
um, and typically when I concentrate on the carbon-carbon single bonds, um, they are free to rotate because these sigma bonds are cylindrically symmetrical. But as the bond rotates, you get into interesting conformations, uh, one of them being the conformation here on the right side in which the hydrogens are basically on top of each other. They line up perfectly. You know, hydrogen on top, hydrogen on top for the um, top version of the molecule. And then you have two hydrogens below and two hydrogens below, and they basically line up uh, perfectly. Now, these conformations are technically in equilibrium because these bonds are rotating freely, but the conformations themselves are not of equal energy because now you have atoms very close to each other um, they're you know they're not exactly in the same position but they're very close to each other you could think of it from the point of view of Newman projections as the atoms being on top of each other now the energy difference is what we call the torsional strain and the greater this energy becomes the more difficult it is for the single bond to rotate and in some cases if you have big enough groups present um, the molecule is actually kind of locked in place. You can't really rotate it 360 degrees. Um, that's not an issue for a thing. But let me show you uh, what this ultimately entails. If we start with the staggered conformation of a thing, all I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate um, and I'm going to go clockwise as well as counterclockwise in this diagram. So I rotate the front portion, because notice that in my structures, I'm keeping the back portion of the Newman projection the same. So the blue, the black, and the purple on the back are still in the same positions. Blue, black, and purple still on the same positions. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the front portion of the Newman projection and I'm rotating it clockwise 60 degrees. And when I do that, now I have the groups on top of each other. This is what we refer to as the eclipse conformation. And because the groups are closer to each other and the groups do have electrons associated with them and even nuclei, right? You know, the closer you bring those things, the more Coulombic repulsion you're going to encounter. So the energy of the molecule goes up, right? This is less stable than having your staggered conformation. And if you start from the staggered conformation and go counterclockwise instead, well, you basically end up with the black carbon now moving onto the blue hydrogen right here and the pink hydrogen moves onto the black hydrogen on the back the red hydrogen moves onto the purple hydrogen on the back right so you end up with this structure now because this is ethane both of these eclipse conformations are equivalent right there is really no difference between the pink carbon excuse me the pink hydrogen and the red hydrogen um, and then if you continue this process of rotating clockwise, uh, this molecule, well, what happens is that the pink hydrogen now falls in between blue and purple hydrogens. The black hydrogen will fall in between uh, purple and back black hydrogen. And the red one will fall in between the blue and the black, which is what you see right here. And once again, now the groups are um, next to each other, not on top of each other. So you go back to the staggered conformation. And likewise, if we continue the counterclockwise um, rotation, we end up with the following staggered conformation. And, and those are of equal energy because all of the groups are the same atom, namely hydrogens. Now, there is an energy associated with um, having the eclipse conformations in which the hydrogens are on top of hydrogens. And experimentally, we find out that this energy difference going from the stagger to the eclipse conformations is roughly 12 kilojoules per mole. Now, if you consider what we have right here, we have hydrogen on hydrogen, hydrogen on hydrogen, and hydrogen on hydrogen. So in essence, we have three hydrogen on hydrogen interactions in the eclipse conformation, which equate to 12 kilojoules per mole. And what this means is that if you divide everything by three, each hydrogen-hydrogen interaction in the eclipse conformation is worth roughly four kilojoules per mole. All right, now let's see what happens when we look at propane. In propane, the picture is a little bit 
more complicated because now we introduce a CH3 group, a methyl group, as one of the uh, potential groups in your Newman projection. So uh, the point of view in this case being uh, this carbon, the front carbon, that carbon, the back carbon. So we're looking at this from the C2 to C3 um, perspective. All right, so in this case, we start with a staggered conformation. That's always going to be your lower energy conformation because the groups are not on top of each other. They're offset. If you rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, what's going to happen is that this methyl group will then end up falling on one of the hydrogens. Um, either the purple hydrogen if you go uh, counterclockwise or the black hydrogen if you go clockwise. And these become the eclipse conformations, which are higher in energy than the stagger. Continue the process of going counterclockwise or clockwise, and you'll go back to being offset, right? And those structures are all equivalent because you have methyl group next to two hydrogens, methyl group next to two hydrogens, methyl group next to two hydrogens. So there is no difference there. Now, the actual energy difference of this molecule experimentally is known to be roughly 14 kilojoules per mole. And notice what happens here in the eclipse conformation. What we have now is hydrogen on hydrogen, another hydrogen on hydrogen, but now we have a methyl on hydrogen. So this must equate to 14 kilojoules per mole, two hydrogen-hydrogen interactions and one hydrogen-methyl interaction. From the ethane molecule example, we already know that the hydrogen-hydrogen interaction is worth four kilojoules per mole. So if we plug that in, we're going to get 8 plus the hydrogen methyl interaction being equal to 14 kilojoules per mole. And if we simply subtract 8 from both sides, we find out that the hydrogen methyl interaction is worth roughly 6 kilojoules per mole. And the reason that this is higher than the hydrogen hydrogen interaction is because the methyl group is actually bigger. And the bigger the group becomes, the closer you're going to be to the adjacent element in your Newman projection. And the repulsion is going to be of greater. Uh, extent. Now, um, this analysis was done uh, for a good number of molecules, specifically a good number of groups. And the ones that I'm going to present here, the more common ones are hydrogen, methyl, ethyl, isopropyl, tert butyl, and phenyl. And the one thing I want you to know, this is for the eclipse conformations, is that the values do go up when we get to the bulkier group. So um, specifically, T-butyl and phenyl are the bigger groups out of the bunch. But among them all, for sure, T-butyl is the bulkiest. And this is because you have a lot of carbon in a very small region of space. And the fact that the T-butyl is technically a branched group uh, means that everything is going out into roughly the same space, right? So T-butyl has a lot of bulk associated with it. And uh, phenyl is, you know, not necessarily close second, but that's the second in terms of the bulkiness, uh, followed by the isopropyl. Then ethyl is a little less bulky, methyl is a little less bulky, and hydrogen, of course, is the smallest of all of them, so you will have the lowest energy of eclipse conformations. So when we look at butane, we can you know, see uh, what happens when we perform the Newman projection analysis. And we're going to start once again with the staggered conformation. Uh, this one in particular, where we have the methyl groups opposite of each other, is also known as the anti conformation. Anti because the methyl groups, the biggest groups, are 180 degrees apart from each other. Okay, so we're going to see what happens if we go clockwise or anti uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, excuse me. The methyl group here on the front, and once again, we're only going to rotate the front, keep the back the same. So if you rotate clockwise, this methyl group is going to move onto the hydrogen here on the left side of the Newman projection. If you go counterclockwise, the methyl group will be on top of the hydrogen on the right side of the molecule. All right, so what ends up happening is that you get to an eclipse conformation where you have two hydrogen methyl interactions and only one hydrogen hydrogen interaction. Continue rotating clockwise or counterclockwise, what's going to happen now is that the methyl group is going to now be offset of the hydrogen. But in the case of this molecule, the methyl group is now going to be between a hydrogen and between a methyl. 
over here, same idea. This methyl group going clockwise will be in between the hydrogen over there and the methyl over here. And whenever this happens, whenever the big groups end up right next to each other, we refer to this conformation as the gauge conformation. And these also have energies associated with them. Now notice that the values are smaller than the ones for the eclipse conformations. And that's because we are not on top of each other, we're next to each other, which is not necessarily good, right? But it's not as bad as being on top of each other. So the values tend to be a little bit smaller. All right, so continuing on with the process, right? If we continue going clockwise, uh, the methyl groups now that, oh, excuse me, the methyl groups here that were in the Gauge conformation going clockwise will have now the two methyls be on top of each other. And same thing here. If you go counterclockwise, the methyl group on the front will land on top of the methyl group on the back. This is the setup for uh, the total eclipse conformation. And the total eclipse conformation is the worst one from the point of view of energy. It's going to be the one highest in energy. And, and this is depicted by the diagram as shown here, right? Um, the lowest energy is the stagger conformation or anti conformation, followed by the regular eclipses, followed by the total eclipses. So, in essence, anytime that you have an eclipse conformation, you're always going to be higher in energy than any of the stagger or gauche conformations that you have. All right, so now in order to determine what the energies are, we can consult the tables right here. And let's start with the gauche conformations. We have a few um, things that can happen. We could have methyl, okay, so we could have methyl and hydrogen, which is basically close to no energy uh, cost in the gauche conformation. Hydrogen, hydrogen is also not uh, worth any energy um, penalty whatsoever. But when you have methyl next to methyl, as it's the case right here, methyl on methyl, this costs about 3.3 kilojoules worth of energy. So what this means is that going from um, yeah, the stagger to the gauche conformations, the energy is going to go up by 3.3 kilojoules per mole. Now compared to the stagger, let's take a look what happens to the eclipses. And on the first eclipse, we have two hydrogen methyl interactions, one hydrogen hydrogen interaction, right? So looking at the table, uh, the important things are going to be the hydrogen on hydrogen, the hydrogen on methyl, and and that's pretty much it, right? Because we don't have any methyl on methyl on the regular eclipse conformations. So we have two of those hydrogen methyl conformations. So we need to multiply 5.4 by 2, and we have one hydrogen hydrogen interaction, which is 4.2. So we are going to add those two together, right? So 1 times 4.2 plus 2 times 5.4. That's equal to 4.2 plus 10.8, which is equal itself to 15 kilojoules per mole. So starting from the stagger conformation and going up to the regular eclipses, we're going up by 15 kilojoules per mole. And finally, let's take a look at the total eclipse conformations. In these molecules, we do have methyl on methyl and hydrogen on hydrogen. So we're going to focus on those two interactions, hydrogen on hydrogen and methyl on methyl. Uh, we have one methyl on methyl, and we have two hydrogen on hydrogen interactions. Placing the corresponding values, 2 times 4.2, that will be 8.4. 8.4 plus 10.5 is equal to 18.9, or roughly 19 kilojoules per mole. So the energy separation from the stagger all the way up to the total eclipse is 19. And so here you can definitely see the profile numerically, that yes, you're going to have a different... Uh, place in the vertical axis for each one of the um, levels. So with that being said, uh, let's stop the video right here and on the next video I will give you another example with a more complicated molecule just so that you can see the process once more. So see you in the next video.